Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Aaron Knows Marketing. Now, today we're going to talk about the most important person in your business. Who is that? You got it. Your customers, your clients, whatever you want to call them. Why are they important? Well, because you provide a service or you provide a product that they pay for, that they opt in to your email list for, that they come to your website for, that they come to your trade shows for, wherever you have them go to purchase your product or service, they give you money. That's why they're important. Without them giving you money, then your business does not have the cash flow to do the things that it needs to do, like hire bookkeepers, hire consultants, hire salespeople, whatever, to build your business. You can't create new products. You can't create new services. Um, because without the consumer, then you have nothing. And that's why this person is the most important person in the whole ordeal of running a business. Peter Drucker says, the primary responsibility for marketing is to create a customer. I totally agree with that. Some people don't. Those people are probably out of business because their thinking is incorrect. But this is what we're gonna talk about today. But before I jump into that, um, one thing I want you guys to do is Go over to AaronKnowsMarketing.com. It's a one-page site, basically in its beta stage. I threw it up uh, for brand recognition, and I'm going to build on top of it. I'll add some content there you know, sooner or later um, as time prohibits. But this is part of my minimum viable marketing process, something that you should probably incorporate if you're waiting to get all your ducks in a row and you haven't put anything out there like to, you know, to get your brand identity out there and you're just uh, resting on one social media platform and not really doing anything, not putting any information out there because you're afraid of people's opinion or you feel like things are not perfect. Minimum viable marketing is a process. It's a real thing that anybody could push out immediately just to get their brand going. So AaronKnowsMarketing.com is where we are right now. I want you guys to go over, download Recession Proof Marketing Secrets. It's evergreen information. It's a damn good ebook. It has a lot of good uh, theories in it. No hypothetical nonsense. It's all practical information that I've used in my own business and I've used in um, you know other clients' business to help their business grow. So you're gonna find a lot of helpful information. It's about forty seven to 50 pages of good information you know we skipped all the fluff and just gave you guys nothing but gold nuggets so go download that and i promise you you'll enjoy it now the first thing as we start to talk about um the customer process right and why it's important i stated before why it's important because they give us money and we give them value And if that relationship is altered in any kind of way, then the business breaks, right? And hopefully you understand that if you have the wrong customer in your business, that relationship is not going to be sustainable because they're not going to be getting from you everything or not everything because you may not be a one-stop shop, but they're not going to be getting from you the things that they want in the long term. You're not going to be hitting their desires. You're not going to be talking directly to their pain points and everything that they need from an emotional standpoint because you've targeted the wrong person. And there's a saying that you can lean your ladder on the wrong wall, right? And then climb up that ladder and realize that you've climbed up the wrong ladder or climbed up the wrong, climbed up the, the wrong wall. And you definitely don't want to do that. You don't want to build the wrong. You don't want to be in a business for five years, 10 years, 15 years, and building a culture that is not conducive for a good customer relationship or even 
and employee relationships because you've built the wrong process. You've built everything wrong. And you're, you're even, for the last five years, you've been innovating for the purpose of creating products and services to appease a customer that is not the customer that you ideally want when you look back at it in hindsight. And there's a lot of people out there that do things like that, that kind of drive their business to a point to where they just create, 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 and create to only realize that, they, damn, we've created so many different products or we've thrown a lot of things against the wall based off of what we thought the customer uh, would have wanted without even doing any survey. So um, there's a couple of things that you need to realize. So I'm gonna go through this process and the slide is here. You can take notes, but I'm going to go through this process with you slowly so that you understand how to uh, how to target the right person and then build frameworks around that person. But make sure you go and download the Recession Proof Marketing. It'll help tie everything together and what I talk about in this video as well as in other videos. Now, the first question you want to ask yourself is like, what type of company are you? What type of company you got? Um, when you think about like what type of company you got, there's two types. There's a product-centric company, and then there's a customer-centric company. When we talk about a product-centric company, we talk about companies who build lots of products or build one or two products. Depending on how big your company is, you build multiple products based off of what your competitors are doing based on what you think the right move is for building products or building services that you think people will pay for without doing any research. And the only research that you are doing is looking at what competitors are doing. So basically you're doing a whole bunch of copycat marketing and copycat um, product creation, right? And generally people or companies that create based off of being a product-centric company end up going out of business because they don't stay ahead of the curve. So you don't want to be a product-centric company. You want to be a customer-centric company because when you become a customer-centric company, you reach out there into the marketplace and you look at everything that um, everything that's going on in the marketplace with consumers. You're reading... Um, you know what your competitors are doing. You, if you're in the same industry, right? If you're if you're in the same industry with you know with com directly, there's indirect competitors and then there's also direct competitors. But if you're directly in competition with someone and you both offer the same product and their product is just a little bit better than yours and you want to find a way to capture more market share by creating a different. Um, a different extension to the product that you have that offers a benefit and a feature that that the competition product doesn't offer, then you go and look at what their consumers are saying about that product. And then you add on to the product the best way you can. Even if it's just like a small adjustment that you make, now you can say, hey, we have a leg up on a competition because this is what this, they offer this razor. We offer the same razor, but our razor does 12 more different things now as of three months ago or as of two weeks ago. And these might be the things that people have been wanting for a very long time with this product. And then that's how you build your products off of what consumers want. And that's how you innovate. So you don't innovate based off of what you think should uh what, what products you think should be out there because if you do that you're going to be creating a, a bunch of products throwing a whole bunch of stuff at the wall and then you're going to find yourself with a whole bunch of products that that's not selling and if you're trying to sell a bunch of products with features and benefits that people don't give a shit about then you're going to be burning a lot of cash trying to market a, that product or burn or burn a lot of money trying to um, push those products into the marketplace to uh, build brand development because every time you create a product, 
you're talking about a different position that has to take place inside that person's mind because there's different benefits that build on top of it. And if they don't have these benefits that they're already thinking of and you haven't identified this ideal person and you've said, okay, this ideal person has one, two, three types of things that they're looking for in this product and we can build this product because we're in this industry of what they're looking for. And then you make the product based on what the consensus of your ideal customer wants. If you're not doing that, then you're setting your company up for failure. Next, you want to be obsessed with your ideal customer. You want to know what conversations they're having in their minds. Even you, even me. When we go out here to these different companies, we're always thinking about like um, sometimes like we go out for like if I go to a store and I'm looking for cologne, I'm thinking like I want to smell this kind of way. If the person who is a customer centric company creating cologne based off of how men want to smell, then they're going to have my cologne inside that company or inside that business. And I'm going to be able to find it because I can go in and say, hey. Do you have a cologne that smells like this, this, and this? And they're going to say, sure, follow me over here. The perfect company who has that specializes in this type of fragrance. Boom. If not, then I got to go somewhere else. But I need to find the product that meets the conversation in my mind most of the time. And your customers are always having conversations inside their mind, right? And so you need to go to forums, blogs, reviews, Amazon, Amazon reviews, look at um, what people are saying about the product that they've already received. Look at what they want. Think about what type of blogs they read to to get the information that they want, because not everybody's in the process of buying. Some people are in the process of searching and comparing so some people are, go to these forums to talk a lot of shit about products and when people are talking shit about products you still want to have that information too because it's valuable information you know so what conversations are they having in their mind and then another thing that helps you connect with your ideal customer and also build a good product is remember is remember your personal pain. We tend to start businesses based off of the personal pain that we have, that we wanted to solve. We have problems that we wanted to solve. Nobody could solve that problem. So we created the solution ourselves and now we're selling the solution to other people who have that problem, right? And that's extremely um, valuable information because if we are all starting a business based off of you know, based off of what we used to, you know, the problems that we used to have. And now we've created a solution that helps people with the same problem that we used to have. Now we know all those pain points. We know why we were losing sleep. We know exactly why we were stressed out. We know why, why we were in pain. We know how we felt before we had that solution. And so now... All that that um, that backstory of how we've created our own solution can go into our sales copy, can go into the creation process of that product or service. So just remembering your personal pain um, is very valuable, and you don't want to you know leave that out into the, the the process of building your business and connecting with your ideal customer. And then you got to think. You know, pleasure or pain. Are they moving away from pain or are they moving towards pleasure? Ideally, if people are saying, I hate my job, I hate losing sleep, or I feel very bad when I wake up in the morning, I feel bad when I go to work, uh, I feel this way, I feel like... I'm lost. If people are using terms like that, then they're then they are moving. They're trying to move away from pain, and that's how you want to position your offers. 
right? So at this point, we've already identified who our person is. Now we're trying to travel into the psychology of who this person is, right? Now, we've identified the blogs, the forums, um, the social media networks. We've identified all those things. Now, we need to create the dialogue. We understand the dialogue that they're having in their mind. And also now when we start to work on our messaging and our copy and things like that, and we already have the product, but we now we need to position the product in a way that it's accepted, right? And it resonates. So now in order to do that, we have to create the messaging. And the messaging goes all the way from the ads, the, uh, the websites, the emails, anything that we're creating, videos, whatever type of content we're creating to push out, to communicate that we have the solution for them. It, it comes from this process of understanding, are they moving away from pain or moving towards pleasure? So kind of pay attention to, you know, the pain words, I hate, you know, I feel bad, um, or bad things happen to me, like this awkward situation and social environments you know like when people use phrases like that like write them down and understand like when you create your copy you can say hey you hate going to work in a, you hate going to work on monday mornings because you dread the reports that you have to do for your boss or you feel awkward in social settings so you want to be able to speak and network to people better like stuff like that you want to your message, so when I see that and if I feel like I hate those things or I feel that way, when I'm reading your message, I'm like, ah, now I'm on the right track. Now, now I found what I was looking for. And the exact same thing works for, you know, pleasure words. When people have something and they want more of something, then most likely they're moving towards pleasure. And the way you would weave pleasure statements into your copy or into your messaging would be like, um, you want more money, right? If you, if you have a business, you've already hit a million dollars and now you want to hit $2 million. Or if you have beautiful skin and now you want to look even younger on top of having that beautiful skin, like stuff like that, you, now you're moving people towards pleasure. And that's how you start to create copy and you start to understand the conversation that people are having inside their mind. Uh, next is, you know, what market slash desire are they in? There's going to be three different types of markets. There's the health market that your product can be in, and it doesn't necessarily need to be a health product, but it's it's about how, where that person is, right? Um Sometimes people don't think that they have a product that is in either one of these markets. There's the, the health market or desire, the wealth market or desire, and then there's the relationship market or desire. And this this means that um, you can have any type of product. Let's just say the recession, the recession proof marketing secrets, right? Like I can choose which market I want or desire my ideal customer is in. Right. I can say that this person, you would think that a recession proof marketing ebook would be for someone who is looking for, you know, more wealth. But this could also I could also attach the idea of creating my copy around the person who is looking for better relationships. You know, so I can take that same book and I can say now I'm I want to I want to help. I can position it and say I want to help other Marketers have better relationships with their clients and create processes for their clients. So now it becomes a relationship market and a relationship desire. Or I can say, I can position it in a health market slash desire and say, hey, now I want to position this book um, as a way to help you get more business. And the more business you get, the more money you can make and the more money you can make, now you can become healthier because of that money and you see now i can travel down this road and say okay there's a correlation between where i start and where i end up in the ultimate positioning of the product so you have to decide which market slash desire 
your ideal customer is going to be in so that you can put the positioning put so you can create um, the right messaging around uh, you know which market or desire they want to be in the the kicker is you can't pick you can't take one product and then position that product in an ad and position that product on your website or in your sales funnel uh, with and try to assume you know the health market desires or plus the wealth market desire it won't work because you can't put you're putting two you're trying to put two positionings in the mind of a customer and people can only think on one positioning at a time so if you really want to hit a home run with someone you need to hang your hat on one of these uh, market desires and write your your copy or create your content based on that one market desire don't try to stuff two di- two or three different positionings in one market desire because you're going to set yourself up for disaster and that's the worst thing you can do when you talk about um, trying to position your product or even you know trust me these are the only three things that people actually ever want right ultimately even with a simple piece of gum if you go buy some gum you want your breath to smell good right that's health or you want your breath to smell good so that you could build better relationships or you want to you want your breath to smell good so that when you walk into a networking event you have better access you can you know talk to people confidently about um, business ideas everything goes into one you just need to pick one and decide which one you want to go with don't try to do all three and don't try to do two at a time that's one ad one positioning one funnel which leads me into the interruption strategy right like i just said your interruption strategy you need to decide like um, before I even just go down this this uh, path of writing my ads or writing my copy or creating videos for whatever content you're creating, you need to decide: Am I moving? Am I going to write in terms of moving this person and talk about uh, my ideal customer moving away from pain or moving towards pleasure? And then once I figure that out, I'm creating the headline. And then once I start getting into the story, am I creating the story? based on um, their, you know, their motives, right? Like based on what it is that they're trying to do, like based on the desire, like we just said, the health desire, the wealth desire, or the relationship desire, exactly where am I going to write the story at within one of those markets? And you got to just, you really got to, uh, that's where the research comes in and going and listening to the conversation that people have in their mind so that you know when you start to write this stuff, you can have that conversation. You can have these bullet points written out and then you can expand on them when you start to write. Um, but yeah, when you start, you want to have that one ad that contains that one desire, that one pain point, that one market. And then you want to have one funnel process per desire. If that entire desire and process is based on if you're if you're as I say your conclusion to your ideal customers they're moving away from pain they're in the uh, health desire and some of the things they're saying in their in their conversation in their mind right now is they you know they want they want they hate their jobs or they hate this or they hate that whatever the case is or they feel bad about this situation then that's what the ad needs to say. And then not only does that what does that what the ad needs to say, the um, landing page needs to say that. And then not only does the landing page need to say that, then the confirmation page needs to say that as well. And then whatever product you're selling needs to have the result that solves that problem. And once all that's congruent, that's when you start to build conversions within your business but you never get to the conversion point unless you understand how to create this entire strategic process and then interrupt people strategically and if you're going to interrupt somebody then make sure you interrupt them with the right messaging 
and you don't waste people's time. How many times have you seen ads on your Facebook page and you're like, what the hell is this ad doing on my Facebook page? I don't even like piano lessons. Stuff like that. That person is wasting money on impressions. That person is just don't using the shotgun approach, nor did they bother to even look at the, I probably I take the time to look at their ideal customer. They just did it based off of what they think people are interested in and put everybody in the same bucket. And that's not strategic because you lose money like that. And if you're not a big time company and you're trying to get um, the most bang for your buck, the highest return on your on investment, then you want to make sure you do the upfront research and use this process that I'm talking about in a way uh, you want to master this process so that before you even launch a campaign, you have the exact ammunition that you need. So yeah, one funnel process, and it needs to be congruent. And then when you, when I, and I know it says one multiple traffic sources, that makes no sense at all. Um, but yeah, multiple traffic sources, right? There are multiple traffic sources. You can use one traffic source depending on what your budget is. But if you use, as I say, Facebook, right? Pick an interest. Make sure that interest is aligned with your ideal customer. Um, and when you pick that interest, that's a traffic source. You're using Facebook. And when you pick that interest, you're not watered down. Now you can go through the analytics analytics knowing that you picked this one in I'm sorry, you picked this one entrance, I mean interest that is not um is not working. So maybe you need to go back to the drawing board and pick a new interest on this one platform, right? On this one platform. Now, if you have a if you have a big budget and you pick that one interest on Facebook and then you go use Google AdWords and you got this one keyword within this one ad group and you're running a campaign based off of that information and it's feeding back into your Google Analytics or however you're tracking this stuff, when you look at it that way, now you know, okay, you can deduce whether or not, um, you can deduce whether or not you know, this ad is working, these keyword, this one keyword is working, or these, this one keyword, and it's sending them to this one keyword, if it's working all together, um, then I'm getting high conversions on Google, and I'm on the right path, and I'm tapping, and I'm tapped into uh, exactly what my ideal customer is searching for. On Facebook, the exact same thing. You could optimize the interest, or keep it the same, based on your return on investment, based on what you're doing. But I would say most likely, and that's if you have the, um, the ability to read your analytics on multiple traffic platforms and if you have the budget to spend on multiple traffic platforms. But starting out, you want one ad per desire that has one pain point, one interest, uh, one market, right? One market. Uh, slash desire, health, wealth, or relationship, and then you want a congruent one funnel process that has that encompasses one pain point, one market desire, and then the conversations that they're having in their mind, and then you want to pick an advertising platform to go after. There's multiple traffic sources that you can use, but most importantly, that's what you want to do. This is the process that you want to use, and then you can decide whether or not if you've done your research, you would know who your comp your competition is directly and indirectly, and you would know where they're advertising because you have found the forums, the blogs, and the social media sites where these people are actually commenting. So when you pull that traffic together, you can see that, okay, these are the traffic sources that I can use and I can drop my uh, bait into those traffic ponds and see what I can come up with. And if things are not working based on this process, then now you have a starting point, a very simple starting point to go back into and reorganize or iterate the process of finding out who your ideal customer is and then honing in on your message. So that's it for this uh, presentation. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button and don't forget to, like I said, go 
over to Aaron Knows Marketing and download Recession Proof Marketing Secrets today. It can help you. It can tie all this stuff in together. And until the next time, thank you guys for tuning in. Peace.